to start each of these, you want to make sure, again, that you're sketching with the vine charcoal that's in that top drawer. Do not sketch with the pencil. No matter what you do, don't sketch with the pencil because the pencil is not easy to erase. And the first thing that you can do when you're drawing anything, really, is to, it's called drawing through. So you're going to draw through to the back side of the object, um, even though you don't see it. So I always start, let's say I'm doing this, um, we'll start with a sphere. I always start with sort of a central line that I'm going to balance it on. And then I start out by trying to draw this oval that would kind of encompass the um, center, like the widest part of the sphere. And the nice thing about having that line to balance it on is that it should be symmetrical. So right now this is too, there's too much on this side and not enough on this side. It's not very even, so I need to make that wider. So that you can kind of use that line down the middle as a way to balance your object out. And it should be sketchy like that. You don't, there's nothing that says that you have to start out with this perfect line with no sketchy edges and get it just perfect the very first time you do it. And then I just um, do a, uh, an oval here and here that are equal distances from this center oval. And they should be about the same size too. So this is going to be smaller because it's at the top of the sphere. And same with this one. And then you just connect those curved outside edges. And you get a nice even sphere. And it's OK if you're using the vine charcoal. It's OK that you're drawing these things that are in the back that you don't really see that's on the back side because it's smooth enough where you're going to be able to erase it or just go right over the top of it anyway. It's very light. Um, and I would do the same thing for the cone and for the, the cylinder as well. It's just a matter of how big the spheres are. So I'm sorry, the ovals. So for the cone, the widest oval will be on the bottom. And then it can progressively get smaller. And you just connect those outside edges. And then I've got a nice even cone. And for the cylinder, it's going to be the same thing. You can do as many as you want, really. I'll just do three. But for the cylinder, they should all match up. And then your outside edges are parallel. OK? One thing to notice is that each curve should be the same type of curve, regardless of how long it is, because it's showing it on the same face of the object. So this curve right here, this should curve the same way as this curve. It's almost as if you can imagine them being parallel because they're on the same face of the object. These have to line up. OK? So like if this was too flat right here, if this went like this, I would know that it's wrong because it doesn't match up with this face or this one. So I have to make sure that that curves to meet the same surface as the rest of it. So that's drawing through. And to set up the, the, the uh, cube, I just start with one box that's, or one square, I'm sorry, one square that's equal on all sides. And everything else has to be parallel from those four lines. So if you can get four straight lines that are equal, you can do a cube because everything else has to be parallel to it. So I would even like line up your chalk that you're drawing with with the edge. And then you just have to figure out how much distance there should be between this corner and the next one. So it's not too much, probably about right there. But it should be parallel. And then, um, let's see. Same with this one and this one. So this line, this one, and this line should be parallel. This line, and this line, and this line should be parallel. And then you can see where those two are supposed to connect. And these should be parallel as well. So this one, this one, and this one. All right, and on your, so that's how I would just set it up. That's how I would draw through the object 